share in her comments. Uh, I welcome any questions at this time that you might have about the regular Charles, did you know that that's what the feds were going to say today? Did you know that the, the, the federal interview, government, that she said those things in the interview? The federal government has refused to provide us copies of the interview. The federal government has refused to talk to us. And the federal government has refused at all points to provide anything about the interview. So what does that say to you? Uh, I'm not going to speculate on the federal government's motives. I would ask them. I would point out, in, in part on this, that the circumstances of this interview are, as set out in court, extraordinary. And even after all that, all they have is basically a garment, a threadbare garment they're trying to hang on this case. But they say Nor admitted to the FBI that she knew about what was going to happen, and she... I'll stand on the part on this part is that uh, I direct you toward what the facts show. The facts do not show, as proper here, a woman who knew. The facts show a woman who bought a Father's Day card. The facts show, and will show in court, as proper here today, the, that uh, who called her family and said that we're coming home here. Uh, it, it, later, uh, coming back here for the first time to visit. The facts show that uh, she went to sleep. And those facts are in complete incongruence. They're completely incongruence with someone who knew and was assisting, not only knew, but was assisting in committing this crime. Could that and, have been part of the cover-up? Uh, well, I would, part of the thing, and that apparently is the government's theory that a special edge student who they could get to confess after 18 hours was actually a brilliant mastermind. I'm surprised on the part that she had thought up this whole way on how to cover and how to drive this. Now, of course, she's not religious, as proffered. She's not, as proffered, uh, had any contact with ISIS, watched anything, done anything herself. You know what she is? She's alive. And Omar Mateen is dead. So she's the only person they can judge. Thank you for your questions. What about the fact that she went to the other place? Uh, you know, if there comes a point ethically, I can talk to you about what happened in court. Uh, but you know, there are ethical lines, so I'm not going to address questions. She saw him walk out with a gun and ammunition. The, the government alleges. The government alleges that, yes. Uh, and I would point out to you that he is a security guard who walked out hundreds of times before with a gun and ammunition. But now with that she she and that she provided a cover story, that she was the mastermind. Uh, part, uh, you heard what I said in court on the part of that. And I will tell you what I said in court on the open record, et cetera, in the proffers that the evidence does not support that. The prosecutor also mentioned they went to downtown Disney and they were talking about whether that would be, what would be the bigger uh, shock factor, downtown Disney or the club. Now, a part of that is, in each one of these parts, I want you to keep in mind that I am talking to a battered spouse who absolutely feared for her life an armed dangerous assessment report and all that part that she had an extreme likelihood of dying or six or extraordinary injury. But what the part on it is that anything on that part, speculation, and let me say something else, uh, as set out in our motion, guess who also talked to Omar Mateen about his threats. The FBI. The FBI. He had made over the threats. He had made similar comments. The FBI interviewed him, yet somehow his spouse, abused and battered, is more competent than that. She should know. And, so you know I'm done with questions. I'm sorry, because ethically. Right, I mean, why is she not a threat? She's, uh, she's got ties to the Bay Area. Well, she, part of the part is she has ties to the area. A, a, a classic part is it's a better question of why would she be a threat? Her family has been long-standing. They have cooperated with the government from without. I have never had a case in some 20 years where the family called the FBI if you went to a restaurant at any time. That is a threat that a family that has cooperated at that level. Uh, I have never had a case where this is a woman who has no violent tendencies, no part on this, uh, 
uh, no connection, no extraordinary uh, ties or things that would suggest a threat. And uh, you know, obviously, that we'll have to be asking what we put into the court was if we no more of a key to the issue. Believe in our case. Yes, we, 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 actually, we have not made any determination on detention. The, the detention motion is ongoing. Well, she was picked up at about four four o'clock in the evening, and she was in the morning. And she was released approximately 12 o'clock midnight by the FBI. She was picked up before, yeah, June 12th. June 12th, and it released at about midnight on June 12th. Uh, so you have in that period of time, there are some periods of time where she's in transit, not necessarily. And no counsel? No counsel. Can you describe it here? I would describe it as an interrogation. Not that one. Not that one. We'll go home, we'll come back. We do these cases. Uh, it will... 
two, two, two to three weeks is what yes. I'm going to guess. Yes, that's why I was saying that on the day. Because all right, the purpose of the hearing is limited for this decision. In other words, it won't be able to be used by either side of the evidence the criminal decision. No, that's not to say it may not be a similar evaluation. It's may not be relevant. But during a period of time, yeah, that's it. Cool. Well, the court's purposes so that the client will fully cooperate.